Gold FM is number one here in Sigatoka. Gold FM is our favorite radio station here in Lotoka. Gold FM is number one in Nelly. I love listening to Gold FM in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM only the classic hits here in Suva. Here about Batu Kola, you immediately think of gold. I'm Josephine Sadi and I love hearing Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In this bulletin, RFMF farewells Mbani Marama and welcomes new commander, Brigadier General Mosese Tikoitonga. Elections manual to be made public soon. And high-level Indonesian delegation visits Fiji. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Brigadier General Mosese Tikoitonga today took over as the commander of the Fiji military forces. Speaking about his new role minutes after a traditional ceremony at the Queen Elizabeth Barracks, Commander Tikoitonga says he has big shoes to fill. As Edwin Nunn reports, today was also the last time that former commander Commodore Vorenge Mbaini Marama addressed the men and women of the force. It was a bittersweet day at the Queen Elizabeth Barracks in Delai Nambua. The RFMF welcomed its new leader and bid farewell to a man who was at the helm for 15 years. The only difficult bit is I'm, I'm putting on the shoes of a very good commander. Um, I, I hope I can live to these expectations of the RFMF. At the church service this morning, in his last address, an emotional Vorengim by Nimurama told the RFMF of his regret because he's leaving a job that he dearly loves. Baini Marama also says he's conscious of the duty that rests with him to continue the revolution that he and the military began seven years ago. The new commander says the military remains committed to the work it set out to do in December 2006. We will continue what we've, we've started in 2006. We will continue to help the people of Fiji. We will uh, defend strongly the constitution that we helped create it in 2013 and we want to ensure all the safety and the security of the people in Fiji. Brigadier General Mosese Tikoitonga admits it will be hard for the military to cut all ties with Mbaini Marama given his 39 years of service in the RFMF, but that has nothing to do with his political ambitions. I'd be lying if I tell you we'll see our all relationship with Mbaini Marama. He's um, served with us and being amongst us for 39 years. Um, Personally, we still have a very warm and will continue to be a very warm relationship with him. But professionally, as a commander and as a member of the Fiji military forces, our professional relationship will depend on what's guaranteed or what's constituted in the constitution. That will be our professional relationship between his political party, his government and the RFMF. As Brigadier General Mosese Tikoitonga takes over as the commander of the Fiji military forces, he's assured that the military remains committed to the mission that it set out on in 2006. He says their role and their responsibilities are clearly spelt out in the 2013 constitution. Mani Marama, in his parting words, has called on the military to remember it's the guardian of the nation and the protector of every Fijian, and this duty is now guided by the 2013 Constitution. Edwin Nand, FBC News. The government today signed an MOU with the Fiji National University to prepare manual and training for candidates in the 2014 general elections. Chanel Sivan reports the manual will give Fijians an idea of what to expect from candidates contesting to be our new parliamentarians. The Fiji National University will provide adequate training for candidates running for elections and a set of guidelines for the electoral process. Attorney General Ayaz Sayed Kayum says it's extremely important for every Fijian to know what to expect from candidates come poll time. Uh, this brochure will take you step by step exactly as to what you have to do. Indeed, it is also applicable to other citizens who may not necessarily contest elections, but they also want to know what do my candidates do. What do they have to comply with? So it's a general reinforcement, not just of the information, but also reinforcement of knowledge. The manual will also be used by political parties and individual candidates. It is essential to provide relevant, accurate and consistent information 
on his steps the potential candidates need to take to qualify for candidature and how to comply with the law before, during and after the elections. The project has two phases. Developing and the first one is developing and preparing the candidate's manual document. And the second one is provide training through workshops to potential candidates. The elections minister says many candidates do not know what to expect when in parliament, claiming even some politicians who have been in parliament before do not know the basic rules of parliamentary sittings. So what are the rules of the house? What do you do when the speaker comes in? Do you sit up? Do you stand down? Do you lie down? What do you do? Um, what happens when a, a minister presents a bill? What is first reading? What is second reading? The project is funded by the Japanese government, which has strongly supported Fiji's move towards democracy. I always believe that democracy enshrines the will and power of the people of a nation. And general election is a process through which it is accomplished. In this respect, Japan is happy to be able to provide assistance to Fiji in better preparing the electorate for the election. The manual is expected to explain Fijians what to expect from their candidates once the manuals are made available to the general public. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. A high-level Indonesian delegation consisting of national and local government officials is currently in the country. National advisor on Papua Affairs, France Alba Joku, says although they have yet to join the Melanesian Spearhead Group, they are thankful to their government for recognizing the need to have their own identity. This visit to Fiji is also in line with the outcome of the recent visit by the MSG foreign ministers to Indonesia in January this year. During that visit, Fiji's Foreign Affairs Minister Ratu Inoke Kumbombola led the MSG delegation to Jakarta, and in particular to the special autonomous province of Papua. It also recognizes uh, the changing circumstances uh, against the larger background of uh, uh, globalization and, uh, uh, and free trade uh, that affecting international community. And Papua is no longer a taboo subject to be discussed in Pacific or the Melanesian uh, context outside Indonesia. The group has met with senior officials and members of Fiji's diplomatic community. It also had lectures to create awareness and generate informed dialogue on the self-autonomy process and development occurring in the Indonesia's Papua province. Still to come on FBC News, Catholics begin Lent season with Ash Wednesday. FM is number one in Singapore. और किसके सुनिए यार हमारे एक सच्चा साथी है मिर्ची एफएम लंबा साथी। I love मिर्ची एफएम it's so hot। देखे मैं लाल लाल खाए मैं हाय हाय। Thank you thank you ताऊपुआ में मिर्ची एफएम is hot। Here at Rugby Town singer talker love listening to मिर्ची एफएम मिर्ची एफएम it's hot। मिर्ची एफएम is number one in Suva it's hot। हम वहीं के लिए लंबा समय रहता है तो क्या कहाँ बताएं हम मिर्ची एफएम सु Mirchi FM, Mirchi FM, it's hot. Welcome back. This is FBC News. The Fiji Roads Authority is working around the clock to repair roads in the Central Eastern Division that suffered widespread damage following last week's flooding. The FRA says a lot of effort has gone into clearing landslides and reinstating access since the weather cleared. Ritika Pratap reports. The heavy rain and flooding last week had a major impact on infrastructure, mostly roads in the rural areas of the Central Division. Contractors have been kept busy, repairing bridge approaches and opening road access. There's, there's not a lot we can do whilst the rain's falling in a lot of areas. You know, the rivers are up, the crossings are underwater, but uh, we, we pre-position machinery, um, we, we get equipment and gravel and timber into places um, where, where we know we've got trouble spots, so we are ready to react. Neil Cook says most roads have reopened, but they don't have a deadline for when all repairs will be completed. The Namosi Valley area is, um, is, is an area where you know, there, are, there have been a lot of slips, there has been damage to bridges, and we just have to work through those things um, step by step 
and, and gradually reopen the roads and reinstate the accesses to, to bridges and uh, affect temporary repairs where we can, get on and design the, the permanent repairs and, and get those done as well. Cook says everything is under control with budgetary allocations already done for emergency works. At the moment we, we're not seeing a great deal of stress on our budget but that said we, we are only in March and, and we've got another you know nine months of the year to go so um, we, we can we can apply some some flexibility within within our existing budget. The FRA expects to spend a lot of funds to fix the name Bore Bore Slip at Kings Road. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Catholics around the country have begun the sacramental observance of the Lenten season from today, known as Ash Wednesday. Mikalonga reports the Catholic Church is observing Lent with special focus on housing the poor and needy in our society. Hundreds packed the cathedral in Zuva to begin the observance of the Lenten season with the marking of ash on their foreheads. As the first question I put, why, why, why am I here today? Why have I come, made a special effort to come to Mass? But have we become EC Catholics, Easter and Christmas Catholics? Just only time of Easter, time of Christmas, then we go and receive the sacrament of penance. <laughs> Ash Wednesday symbolizes the beginning of the liturgical period of prayer, fasting or abstinence. Archbishop Peter Loy Chong says the church's focus this year is to build a proper home for the unfortunate. Every year we, we carry out a Lenten appeal for a particular project. This year uh, the, 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 the Lenten appeal has a very special focus and it's for the poor people and in particular this particular community that live behind uh, St. Vincent House that we want, that we would like to really provide them with uh, good uh, housing facilities, toilets and showers. Uh, right now they don't really have uh, those uh, basic necessities of uh, life, you know. This building in central Suva shelters some of the poor and disabled in our society. They've been accommodated here for the past few years. The head of the Catholic Church is calling on parishioners to help him build a decent home for them. I visited the place uh, about a month ago and I was uh, really moved and I had how these people, you know, who cannot be catered by St. Giles and other old people's home are being uh, cared for in very, uh, you know, makeshift uh, housing. Prior to today, many Catholics would have made up their minds on what to give up and sacrifice as Jesus did during his 40-day fast in the desert where he endured temptations by Satan. All the red meat, all the drinks. I have given all meat and be fasting so that I can grow more deeper in faith and the relationship with our spiritual Lord. Repent and believe in the gospel. The church hopes its flock will stick to whatever they've promised to sacrifice before God today and come out a new person after 40 days. Mikalonga, FBC News. FBC News ran a story on Monday stating there were 150 more scholarships available under the Baini Marama government's tertiary education loan scheme commonly known as TELS. We apologize for the mistake. In fact, the TELS board has expanded scholarships in different fields by 150 percent and not 150 more scholarships. That time again, but Jamie is not here, so we join Elena for the very latest in sports. Thank you, Jackie. Coming up, we have the very latest from the Fiji Under-20 Rugby Trials, also hockey to go hard in Vanuatu. Today, FM is number one here in Singapore. We are today FM in Lombasa. It's not! My favorite station in Nandi is Today FM. Uh, listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks in Suba. Lodogasi they love today's kid music. I love today FM because they play all my songs. We love today FM at Vuniva Lombasa. Yeah, it rocks! I love today FM because it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Welcome back. You're watching FBC Sports. Only three players from the Vodafone Fiji 7 squad will not be featuring for their clubs in the Mara 7s this weekend. Skipper Osea Kolini Sao, Pio Tuwai and Benito Masilevu are not allowed to play as they are still recovering from injuries. 
Coach Ben Ryan says a number of squad members will be featuring at the two-day tournament. Also a boost for the side is Leo Naikasau, who's recovered from injury and will feature for the Wardens. The Vodafone Fiji Under-20 side is confident of getting the right players to match their pool opponents in the Junior Rugby World Cup. The team has been lined up against Giants, France, Wales and Ireland. The trials held today were to scout for players willing to put their bodies on the line against their bigger rivals. Chalindao Dalkadaka reports. About 70 players turned up today to try their luck at wearing the white jersey for the upcoming Junior World Cup in New Zealand this June. It won't be an easy task with their pool opponents, France, Ireland and Wales, who have the advantage of competing in the Six Nations Under-20 competition. We've got a selection criteria basing on that as well, trying to get a, you know, a, a bit of beef up in the forwards and of course across the park. And we've seen uh, uh, how Wales and France and the other teams have prepared uh, themselves coming to the tournament in the last couple of years. So I guess uh, we're just going to match up, come, you know, uh, beefing up in the forwards, of, of course, across the park and hopefully we'll compete uh, coming in the tournament. Officials have been keeping tabs on their competitors as part of their World Cup preparation. Yeah, looking at the uh, video clips uh, the last couple of days, um, you know, they've been really tough. They're playing uh, the competition uh, up north. So it's a matter of us trying to identify, you know, what our strong points and what we can get out there and, you know, compete at, at, at that level. And, um, you know, the interest shown in by the players involved, uh, it's been good. And uh, hopefully we get a good team out there. Last year's campaign saw Fiji finish 11th in France. Will this year's team be able to improve from their last outing? Only time will tell. Tsalendo Dakavak, FBC Sports. Go hard or go home is the attitude the Fiji hockey under-18s have adopted before the Youth Olympic Games qualifiers in Vanuatu. National boys coach Tucker Newton believes they stand a good chance of returning home as one of the top two teams from the tournament. Their toughest opponents will be from Australia and New Zealand. Coaching Fiji Hockey's first national under-18 team is a huge privilege for this turf veteran. With a day to go before tournament mode kicks in, he's not letting anything get his young brigade down. We are not ex expecting anything less than a medal. Five-a-side is five-a-side. If you're fit and you're ready to play, like I know, the boys and the girls that have been training with us, the conditioning they have, the fitness they have, the skills they have, we are going out there to win. Nothing short of it. Feeling in camp for this Levuka rep has been overwhelming. It's been long. My little hockey there started there. And, uh, and I'm so blessed being a national rep and representing my town and my country. While others are just busting to prove a point. A lot of excitement and um, a lot of uh, adrenaline going through the boys right now. And um, to represent Fiji over there is very, it is a really strong hearted boys training there and um, we're sure to come back for the victory. New Zealand is the opening match for Fiji in Port Vila on Saturday. It's their very first test, and he is hoping their confidence continues to grow as the games unfold. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. That was your FBC Sports for tonight. It's back to Jackie for business. Our economy is expected to maintain the economic momentum of last year and continue its broad-based growth. In its latest review, the Reserve Bank of Fiji says investment is very supportive of growth and is likely to remain robust. The RBF says the healthy growth and investment activity noted last year augurs well with the labor market resulting in an increase in job openings. The annual consumer price index eased to 2.3 percent in, in January, down from 3.4 percent noted in December.
Looks like all major centers experienced some fine weather and some showers today. There was fine weather in Nandi, Lautoka, and Ba throughout the day, while Sabu Sabu and Lombasa had showers. Suva had some cloudy periods and showers in the morning and a mix of fine weather and cloudy periods by the afternoon. Sabu Sabu recorded the lowest on the temperature chart hitting 30 degrees. Suva and Lautoka hit an even 31 degrees and Nandi and Lombasa hit 32 degrees. Ba was on the hottest place today with 33 degrees. Tomorrow, Suva and Savu Savu should expect showers throughout the day. Nandi, Lautoka, Mba and Savu Savu should have fine weather and there will be possible afternoon showers. Further outlook, occasional showers and few thunderstorms over Vanua Levu, Taviuni and the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Elsewhere, fine apart from afternoon or evening showers, moderate southeast winds, moderate to rough seas. Outlook for Friday, occasional showers and few thunderstorms over most places. Before we leave, our main stories again. RFMF farewells Mbani Marama and welcomes new commander Brigadier General Mosese Tikoitonga. Elections manual to be made public soon and high-level Indonesian delegation visits Fiji. This week's poll question, we're asking, should people be penalized for not adhering to weather advisories? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That's FBC News for tonight. Till tomorrow, from me and the team, bye for now. Kita isi ngatakan untuk tali tangan apa orang yang radio visual, mesti sen jalan mutu. Aku nak korong nak tali lagi. Mandau tali tangan ni apa orang radio visual. Kita tunggu isu untuk tali tangan apa orang radio visual, mesti sen jalan mutu. Kita tali tangan radio visual. Na radio visual, entau tali tangan kita lagi eh sinkoka. Mesti sen imajino binatia na radio visual. Kau 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 k